Imagine waking up tomorrow and your biggest problem is deciding where to fly next. No bills to worry about, no financial stress, just what's next. What if you could work in any store and any dealership and buy exactly what you want without thinking twice about the price? Or finally live in the home you always dreamed of, designed exactly the way you imagine. Now stop imagining because the truth is that this life is closer than you think. And in this video, I will show you how to make it your reality. How do I know? Simple. I've done it. And I went from absolutely nothing, zero dollars in my account, to over one million dollars in cash in just three years. I did it using 10 principles and today I'm gonna give them to you. No fluff, no gimmicks, just the real stuff that actually works. And listen closely, because I learned one of these principles from an ancient philosophy that most people have never even heard of. My name is Edouard Merodubo, I'm an entrepreneur and I currently generate over 500k per month with my company Teliosa.com, a company that I co-founded with my brother. Together, we help people grow their business to reach 100, 300, or even 500k per month. So the reason I make this video is simple. I want to help you unlock the same potential and hit your biggest goals. So let's go principle number one. Don't listen to broke people. So let me tell you a bit about where I come from. I didn't grow up with money. My family wasn't wealthy and I didn't live in some fancy neighborhood. I spent most of my childhood in a small village called Paul Samarson. It's a really small village in Lorraine. And there were about something like 1,000 people in that village. And we were a really big family, five kids with just my dad working. And so life wasn't really easy. We had what we needed to get by and plenty of love, but let's just say that we weren't rich. And so every day on my way to school, I did work past this huge steel factory that ran nonstop day and night. And in fact, you could even hear it coming from miles away. So. That factory wasn't just part of the landscape, it was the dream for a lot of people around me. And so most of my friends at that time, at that school, wanted to work there, just like the parent did. And in their minds, getting a job at that factory was like the huge goal, the thing is to aim for. And so when you grow up surrounded by that kind of mindset, it can be hard to imagine anything different. It's like the idea of making a lot of money. For those people, it doesn't exist. And in fact, it's not even considered possible. So that's the environment I came from. But I didn't let it define me. And I want you to know that it doesn't have to define you either. What I learned along the way is that you need to be very careful about who you listen to, especially when it comes to your dream. And yeah, a lot of people mean well, but if they've never stepped outside of that world, their view of what's possible is very limited. And I kept my dreams to myself for the most part. I was lucky, my family was really supportive with me, but I knew that what really mattered wasn't talking about my dreams. It was doing the work. I keep my dream to myself for the most part. I was lucky because my family was supporting me. I was with my brother. And this lesson doesn't just apply when you're broke. It's true, no matter where you are financially. Whatever you are just starting out or already doing well, you can't afford to take advice from people who aren't where you want to be. As Warren Buffett says, Wall Street is the only place where people driving Rolls Royce take advice from people who take the subway. And it's true, everyone has an opinion, but not all opinion I was listening to. Even now, as a millionaire, I'm grateful about those advice I take, because giving advice is easy, it costs nothing, but acting on the wrong advice, that can cost you everything. So yeah, the third one thing I want to share with you is this, don't cheat with the mirror. So life reflects back what you put into it. It's like holding a mirror to your action. There is an ancient philosophy from a book called The Kibalion that talks about the law of the universe, including the law of cause and effect. And simply put, everything you do creates a ripple that comes back to you. And so good actions lead to good accounts, but bad actions, they will come back to bite you eventually. For example, if you judge others harshly, you will end up trapped in the fear of being judged. If you don't invest in yourself, no one else will invest in you either. And if you hesitate when making decisions, other will hesitate to do business with you. I learned this the hard way. When I first started, I noticed that I needed people to act fast and commit when we work together. 
But I realized something important. If I wanted them to be decisive, I had to lead by example. I had to make decisions quickly and clearly myself. Either yes or no. No maybes, no hesitation. And once I did that, I noticed people started responding the same way with me. And so this applied to money too. If you want clients who pay on time, you need to pay others on time. I had a student, for example, who was struggling to collect payment from his own clients. And so when we dug into it, we found that he wasn't paying his bill on the time either. And so I told him, hey, how can you expect people to pay you when you don't do the same? So that's the mirror in action. It reflects exactly what you project. And it's not just about the big things. Small habits matter too. I never ask for refunds because I don't want my clients asking for one. I always prefer to pay in full because that's the kind of energy I want to attract in return. And when I work with someone, I do my best to be their ideal clients. Whatever that means paying early or leaving a great testimonial. Here is an example. I recently worked with a really good coach who was just starting out, but was great at what he did. And so I told him, if you need a testimonial, just let me know. And he appreciated. And yeah, it was a big thing for him. And so I went further. I told him, write exactly what you want me to say and I will post it for you. I gave him the testimonial word for word because I know how much the small actions matter. And I want to give other the kind of energy I hope to receive. I also believe in clearing all depths, even the small ones. And so a few years ago, I go around like, I don't remember, I think that it was 10 or 20 euros from a carpool ride. And I never never paid it back. It wasn't a big amount, but it stayed in the back of my mind. So one day I reach out to that person and say, hey, send me your bank info. I owe you for that ride. They were surprised, but I did it to clear my mind and to keep my energy clean. And yeah, every little thing adds up. And this principle applies to every part of life. One time I was with my girlfriend and the waiter forgot to charge us for just a small bottle of water. It was like maybe 10 euros. And so my girlfriend said, let's just leave it. But I told her, no, no, that's not right. The waiter might not do this, but the universe does. So I told the waiter and he offered me the water. If I cheat over small things, bigger problem will eventually show up in my life. That's just how the mirror works. What you put out comes right back to you. You can't expect the mirror to smile if you don't smile first. If you want your life to change, you have to change the way you see yourself and how you act. That was one of the hardest lessons for me to learn. But once I did, everything started to change. So the third principle is what I call the latency period. And so here are the thing. When you start working on yourself, and making changes, you won't see the results right away. There is always a delay between the moment you change and the moment things shift in your reality. And that's the tricky part because it takes time for everything to catch up. Now, maybe if you are a yogi, someone mastering the law of the universe and quantum reality, you did see result instantly. And in fact, there is a book, it's called Autobiography of a Yogi, which is, by the way, Steve Jobs' favorite book. And so in this book, they talk about yogis being able to levitate and make gold appear out of thin hair. It's crazy stuff. You don't have to believe in me, but just read the book. Again, it's one of Steve Jobs' favorite book. But yeah, we are not your gaze, we are not at that level. And if you were, you wouldn't even be watching this video. And so for the rest of us, the process is a bit more grounded. When we decide, okay, I want to change my life, I want to become a millionaire, I want to earn a lot more money, it doesn't happen overnight. And that's when the mirror effects come in again. There is a delay between the image you send out and the reflection that comes back. And so let's take my experience, for example. It took me three years to go from zero in my bank account to over $1 million in cash. Three years might sound like a long time, but looking back, it went pretty fast. So the first part of the journey felt really slow, like nothing was happening for the first year and a half, it was zero, 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 zero. Then suddenly things accelerated and that's how it works. There is always a lag time. How long it takes depends on where you are starting from and where you're trying to go. Let's say that you are almost a billionaire and you just need that last million to hit a billion. The shift will probably happen fast. But if you are starting from zero and aiming for a billion, that's going to take a longer time. The timeline is different from everyone. And so the key is to not give up during the latency period. If I had quit at any point during those three years, 
I want to be where I am today. You have to trust the process, even when it feels like nothing is happening. The truth is, we are the one creating our reality. We are the source of the outcome you want. But there is always a lag between the work you put in and the results you see. Now, the fifth point, and one of the most important is this, you have to rework your belief. And so one of my favorite saying is the important thing isn't what's true, it's what you think it's true, because eventually what you believe will become your reality. Everything starts with your beliefs. The way you think drive yourself and those self are what ultimately creates your reality. It's not about what's objectively true, it's about what you believe to be true. And here is the challenge. As you get older, you accumulate beliefs that might have made sense at one point, but no longer help you move forward. And so, for example, as I'm approaching 25, my beliefs about money were completely different from those of my younger brother who was 17. He didn't have to unlearn all the unemployed beliefs I did pick up from years of working and being around people with limiting mindsets. And at that time, I was working hard and earning about like 3k a month, and I just couldn't picture myself making 100 career. It felt completely out of my reach. I had to rework my beliefs and convince myself that making a lot of money didn't have to mean burning out or sacrificing my well-being. There is an old mindset that says money only comes through hard work. But that belief comes from the experience of manual laborers. If you ask a billionaire how they earn their wealth, some might say take effort, of course. But you will notice many are healthier and less stressed than people who work twice as hard for far less. The truth is, working harder doesn't guarantee earning more. I know plenty of people work incredibly hard and still struggle to make ends meet. So reworking your belief is essential. Let go of the idea that money only comes through struggle. Yes, it's what of course, but it's not the only path. You need to believe that making money can be simple, sustainable, and aligned with a healthy lifestyle. Once you change those beliefs, your reality will shift to match them. The sixth point is this, you need to change your identity. This was a game changer for me. Earlier, I mentioned how everything starts with your thoughts and beliefs, and it's a form of mental reprogramming. But what I've learned is that reprogramming isn't just about changing how you think, it's about changing how you see yourself. And a lot of beliefs we carry come from our families, friends, and environment. There is one reason why kids with wealthy parents often grow up to be wealthy themselves. They don't think being rich is complicated. But for someone from a lower social class, it's much harder because it requires a shift in identity. I didn't just work on changing my mindset. I changed my physical identity too. I got rid of all my old clothes, put them in garbage bags and went to Zara, where I spent $200 on a new wardrobe. I think that that act alone gave me a fresh start and helped me step into a new version of myself. This identity shift weren't just cosmetic. They were a way for me to prove to myself that I could become someone different, someone who wasn't afraid of change or judgment. And honestly, this change made a huge difference. Each time I level up my identity, it became easier to believe in the new version of myself. And that belief is what drawn my success. The next point is to design your future with absolute clarity. This is what I call the quantum playbox. If you are one of my students, you have probably heard me talk about it before. And so the idea is simple. You need to design as clearly and precisely as possible the person you want to become. And in this playbook, which is several pages long, I've written down exactly who I am and who I am becoming. I've mapped out every detail, how I want to look physically, what I want people to think when they see me, the achievements I want under my belt in the next five years, and how much money I want in my bank account. I've even write about the beliefs and thoughts I want to embody. The goal is to be as specific as possible. I even wrote a personal manifesto. Think of it as a wiki page. Who is Edouard Merle de Bourg? In this manifesto, I describe who I am, what I've achieved by the end of my life, and the story of how I got there. It's a bit like making yourself like a legend, making my story feel epic and meaningful. I've added little picture to represent each step. I started with the kid from the village, 
then wrote down the milestone I want to reach, he did this, then that, then achieved this, and so on. But here is the thing, it's not just about doing this exercise once. What really matters is coming back consistently. I always keep my playbook right next to me, because I use it every day. I review it at least once a week to stay aligned with my goal. And to be honest, I've even taken it a step further and created what I call mind movies. Basically, I made a short film of my vision. It's easier to watch than reading all the pages. I watch it every day to stay motivated and focused. Right now, I'm making 500k a month, some months even 600. And watching that vision regularly keeps me on track to achieve even more. The funny thing is, I know people who are just getting started maybe making 100k, 200k, and I can tell they haven't fully embraced this process yet. But here is the truth, even bitterness use tools like this to stay sharp. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. These habits are what keep you going. And so in my playbook, I also use images of People who really inspire me. Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, Alexander the Great, Platon, Napoleon Bonaparte, Hermes, Tesla, and Michelangelo. I don't just admire their achievements, I try to absorb their energy, or at least the image I have of them, and let that fuel the new version of myself I'm creating. The eighth point is track everything for clarity. You can't improve what you don't measure. And if you want to create self-awareness and build new habits, you have to track them. Otherwise, it's easy to lose track of what you are doing and how often you are doing it. When it comes to practice like affirmations, meditation, or using the quantum playbook, consistency is key. So doing it once a week won't get you anywhere. It's like brushing your teeth or showering. You don't need to spend hours on it, but you do need to do it every day. You don't need new technique all the time, you just need to stick to the basics and remind yourself regularly. And religions follow a similar pattern. In Islam, for example, people pray five times a day to stay connected to God. For the Christian, you have to go to the church once a week. And so the big takeaway is what matters is not just doing things, but doing them consistently. That's why I developed what I call the quantum tracker. And if you are one of my students, I show you exactly how to set it up. The idea is to track key habits for 31 days, because it's usually time that takes to form a habit. And so every day I log things like, what time did I wake up? What time did I go to sleep? What was my sleep score? Did I meditate? Did I exercise? Did I do my affirmation? How many hours did it work? It's okay to miss things now and then. It's not about being perfect, but about tracking your progress on the sleep. And so after 31 days, I can review and see did I complete this task 70%, 80% or 100% of the time? I've noticed that consistency is key. If you only eat 80%, that's still better than most people. And I aim to do my routines Monday to Friday. And while it's ideal to do them every day, I know it's okay to take break on weekends. And so the idea reminds me of something my coach always say, touch the ball every day. Think of athletes like Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, LeBron James, they train every day, even during off season. Why? Because they love the game. I know that staying sharp requires constant engagement. So in the same way, you have to touch the ball with your mindset work every day, even if it's just for a few minutes. And at the same time, it's important not to be too hard on yourself. I used to feel like if I missed a day of meditation, I had to start over from scratch. But now I see it differently. It's about doing things well most of the time, not being perfect. If you hit your goal 80% of the time, you are already ahead of 99% of people. What I love about all this mindset work is that it's entirely under my control. And so Marcus Aurelius wrote in meditation that we need to focus on what we can control and let go of what we can't. Mindset is something you control. It's simple and accessible to everyone. You don't need to convince anyone else, it's just you and your goals. And when you track your progress, you would say things start to align. I review my quantum playbook regularly, maybe once a year. And it's amazing how many things I set out to achieve have actually come true. And so for example, when I first set the goal of making 20K a month, I hit it, 20K, then 25, then 30k a month. But it wasn't easy. I was working hard, grinding with cold calls all day, and honestly, life felt really hard. Then I realized I needed to tweak my affirmation. Instead of saying, 
I earn 20k a month at changing, I earn 20k a month easily. And things shift. Suddenly, I start making that money with far less effort. So I did the same thing with 100k. I earn 100k a month easily and it worked. Now, every time I set a goal, I make sure the affirmation includes the word easy. For example, I make 100k a month in profit easy. The funny thing is, people around me have noticed the difference too. I remember one friend telling me over dinner, you guys always seem to be doing well. And it's true, of course. Life has its challenge, but it never feels overwhelming. That's because I reinforce these ideas every day with affirmation like, I'm happy no matter what, or I'm mysteriously lucky. It's amazing all things align when you believe good things will happen to you. The next point is about the power of saying no. Something that took me a long time to understand is that every time you say no to something, you're really saying yes to something else. And learning this was a game changer for me, not just in business, but in life. For a while, I was thinking that in order to succeed, I had to stop seeing friends and skip every social events. But I quickly realized that isolating yourself is one of the worst things you can do. It's not sustainable and honestly, it makes life miserable. So instead, I found a better way to better things. I decided that I would go to almost everybody, but with two roles. First, I wouldn't drink and I did leave early. I learned that over I learned over time that nothing good ever happened after midnight, anyways. So staying sober means that I could enjoy the night, connect with people, have fun, but still stay sharp. And leaving early gave me enough energy to wake up the next morning and get to work on my business without missing a bit. So that small shift make a huge difference. I didn't miss out on the social moment that matters, but I also didn't let those nights derail my progress. While others were still recovering the next day, I was already up working on my goals. And over time, the small decisions saying yes to fun, but on my own terms, compound into real progress. The key is this. Success doesn't require you to sacrifice everything. You don't have to cut out your friends or skip every event. What matters is being intentional, going to the party, having fun, but setting boundaries so that you can stay aligned with your bigger goals. Saying no to drinking and staying late wasn't about discipline for the sake of it. It was about saying yes to my future self. And looking back, that approach kept me sane. It kept me connecting to the people I care about, while also staying on track with my goals. You don't have to burn bridges to succeed. You just need to find a balance that works for you. And trust me, once you realize that nothing good happened after midnight, saying no becomes a whole lot easier. The final principle I want to share is this. Stop comparing yourself to others and stay in your lane. It's so easy to look around and think that everyone else is ahead of you. I used to fall into this trap all the time, especially when I first started my business. I did scroll through social media, seeing people celebrating big wins and feel like I wasn't doing enough. And they are crushing it at all. And like I was, they are crushing it, but I'm not, I don't understand. But here is what I realized. Comparing yourself is a recipe for misery. It's like running a marathon, but constantly looking at the runners next to you. You will either trip yourself up or exhaust yourself trying to keep their pace. And so everyone's journey is different and success isn't a race. What really matters is that you focus on your own progress and stay in your lane. I would give you an example from my own life. So back when I was starting out, I had a friend in a really similar business and it seemed to me growing much faster than I was. And so every time I saw him post a win online, I did feel like I was falling behind, even though I was doing well in my own right. And so yeah, he was doing everything faster than me anyway. And so, yeah, sometimes I was feeling a bit demotivated to do the work because it was just so ahead of me. And I realized that the only thing I could control was my own progress. I didn't know the full story behind his success. Maybe I had more resources, a different starting point or connection I didn't have. And in fact, even if he didn't, that shouldn't affect my path. I reminded myself that his success didn't take away from mine. It wasn't a competition. So I stopped checking his update and focused on doing my own work day in and day out. And I doubled down on my strategy, stuck to my routines and trust the process. And you know what? Over time, things started to click for me. It didn't happen overnight, but when I looked back, I realized how far I had come just by staying in my lane. 
So the truth is you can't win someone else's race. You can only win your own. And so comparing yourself to others is just a waste of energy. Focus on your growth, your goals, and your unique path. The only person I'm always comparing to myself is the version of me from a year before. And so every time you catch yourself thinking, I should be further along, remind yourself you are exactly where you need to be. Success doesn't happen at the same speed for everyone. And that's okay. What matters is that you are making progress step by step at your own pace. So if you take one thing away from this video, let it be this. Stay in your lane, focus on your journey, and trust that everything will come together when the time is right. And so if you like that mindset video, I'm preparing another one where I explain exactly how I scale my business from zero to 500k. So subscribe and see you soon.